Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Now, we're going to talk about some development, but uh, the good news is, let's start with some good news. It is late in August, and we don't have any named tropical systems in the Atlantic Basin. That is a big deal. That is some good news to pass along. Will there be some development? Yes, but we'll just track it together storm by storm. You could subscribe or not subscribe to this channel, uh, just doing it for safety. So let's let's get into where we are seeing some uh, potential for development. So here we are in the Caribbean. I want to zoom down with some of the rain and storms we've had in spots from overnight. We'll get into that. Another pocket of rain just off now toward the east of Trinidad and Tobago. No signs of development there. We have this kind of cluster of rain and storms here. This is what may develop. And then coming off the coast of Africa, really kind of a couple spots, that is likely to develop. Now that looks like a monster right there. The angle of the satellite though does make it a little bit worse, looks a little bit worse than it is, but it is a strong tropical wave. And then you see the uh, satellite kind of uh, uh, cutting off at that point uh, because of the uh, curvature. But overall, we're gonna see that tropical wave develop. Now, here's what's going on in the short term. So again, here we are, Puerto Rico, Dominica, St. Lucia, Barbados, Grenada. Here's that little pocket near Trinidad and Tobago. This is still kind of running into some of that drier air. This is the one that changes the season and makes it more active once again. It's really hard to tell if this is going to develop. I'm not sure, let you know what I know and don't know. I'm not sure if this is going to develop, but it does have a chance. I want to show you that, but it's this pocket here that will likely develop because as this moves in, it just kind of moves away some of the dry air. This area is going to add moisture to the environment and that will make it more conducive for what's behind it to develop. And I'll show you that with the models, the ICON, the American, and the European model, we'll get into that. Now in the short term, I do. It, this does have my attention, that tropical wave that is sitting just to the east of us because we know the water temperatures are so very warm, running at about 30, 31 degrees Celsius, 86 to about 89 degrees Fahrenheit. Water temps are warm, but there is some dry air above. So the water temps, not good for us, uh, but above us, it is still kind of dry. But on the flip side of that, if any tropical wave uh, hangs together and is strong enough and works into the Caribbean, we have these hot pockets right through here, this is the heat content. The two biggest ingredients of this hurricane season are the dry air. Uh, that's That's been helping us out, right, over the last uh, couple weeks as a whole. And then secondly, it's the heat content. That is warm water that goes down kind of deep. Uh, so it's, a, it's, it's very warm at the surface and still substantially warm uh, just below. So if anything rolls over these hot pockets, things could uh, uh, get stronger quickly or even rapidly intensify. And that's why I'm using uh, much caution going forward because I know these tropical waves are getting stronger. Now that first disturbance we're watching, that second one looks like it's going to develop. But that first one I'm watching, the ICON model does have it develop into a tropical storm in the Caribbean. The American model right now doesn't really have it becoming a storm. The American model does try to spin up something here and there. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. The European model as of now has increased rain. Some of us need the rain, but some of us cannot handle any more rain. Uh, we'd have some flooding uh, moving into the Caribbean, but the European model shows no storm. I'll show you that model. And the uh, Canadian model does eventually have this develop into a tropical storm. So kind of 50-50, right? Uh, forecasting the weather two days in advance could be tricky, uh, yet alone three, four, five, six days in advance. Now, uh, whatever develops next, the next name on the list is Francine. We had Ernesto. Of course, there's other systems in the Eastern and Central Pacific. Those go off different sets of names. I'll show you the Eastern Pacific in a moment. But the next name on the list is Francine then Gordon, then Helene, then Isaac and Joyce. And let's hope we do not get too far down the list as we get through the uh, season, not even at the halfway point, a few days away from the halfway uh, point of the hurricane season. So this is the Icon German model. Here we are here. Now the models are all different. They take into uh, the environment uh, a little bit differently. Uh, they have different computing uh, power, just like different types of computers. Uh, now here's the setup. There's one little spit I'm watching here. Here are these tropical waves we're watching here and a lot of moisture that'll build in the Caribbean and kind of swing off toward the southeast of the US. Something may spin up here and here, then kind of lift to the north, but drawing, I'll keep an eye on those, but drawing our attention to these tropical waves. So let me just take you out in time. I wanted to show you the overall setup. Now we'll bring you into the weekend here uh, as we work our way into a Sunday. This right here is Sunday. Now uh, the icon model is not showing development as quickly as it did yesterday. That's a good thing. We don't want anything to develop in, uh, at all. And if something does develop, we do want it to uh, develop very slowly, not quickly into something crazy. So here's another little spin watching here. Everything going around these areas 
areas of high pressure. Uh, but to the east of us, yesterday it was showing a tropical storm. Now it's just showing some rain. So it's kind of backed off a little bit of the idea of a tropical storm. Also watching the Gulf of Mexico. Occasionally the models hint at something developing here. There's old fronts. Uh, the environment is telling me we're going to have some leftover moisture in the Gulf. So watching out for the potential of a little spin up there. So keep an eye on that. Let's go out in time further here and then we'll compare this to the American model. This right here is by the middle of next week. So this here is a week from now, uh, Wednesday of next week. It's showing several things. Now, the ICON model has this tropical wave eventually moving into the Caribbean and developing as a tropical storm. It's a wait on sea on that. This is seven days from now. It does have a tropical storm or a hurricane trying to develop in the Gulf of Mexico with the leftover moisture. We'll wait and see on that. This one does look like it is going to develop. All the models and environmental conditions are pointing to a hurricane developing right here by the time we get into the middle of next week in the central Atlantic. Now, uh, hopefully it makes kind of that curve even away from Bermuda. That will be the hope. But this first tropical wave moving in that I mentioned adds to the moisture in the atmosphere and that allows this one to be able to develop. But the ICON model showing a lot of development as we get into uh, uh, early and mid next week. This one is the one I have high certainty in developing. This one is a maybe. And then this one's just a big question mark as far as what will happen in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see some of the question marks here uh, as we work into the American model. And this is common because we're transitioning from a dry atmosphere uh, to uh, one with more moisture. So as you transition into more of a conducive environment, Environment for development, it's really hard to kind of see when that switch is going to get turned on. Jamaica, some rain and storms today, no development. Watching the Gulf and then watching uh, some rain and storms working in today. But here's that first tropical wave here on the American model. Now look what happens as we go out in time. It doesn't really develop that first tropical wave. This here going out in time, working well out in time. This is through the weekend into next week. This is six days from now. It does show it though. It is still seeing it, seeing increased rain in the Eastern Caribbean, but not showing development. But here's that surge of moisture I was talking about. Watching anywhere from Jamaica, Belize, uh, back toward uh, the Yucatan of Mexico, Cuba, Cayman Islands, a surge of moisture in here. Here are these old fronts. So the Western Caribbean and Gulf, as I said, a big question mark here, but a lot of moisture building. So watching that, and then we'll be watching that next tropical wave that is coming off the coast of Africa now, uh, marching across. This here is deeper into next week. So this is eight days from now. It is trying to show something spinning up in the Bay of Campeche, watching this old front here. And then you can see all of this moisture here. And the American model does try to develop something out in the Atlantic as we work our way deeper into next week. So a little bit different from the ICON model. The ICON model is more aggressive. You see here, this now is going way out in time. Look at the clock. This this is September 8th. So we're looking at about 10, 11 days from now. Once again, that surge of moisture near Jamaica. We'll see if anything wants to develop back into the Gulf. And then here come these stronger tropical waves that should start to develop. So yeah, it's going to get more active. September is the peak of the season. We expect that, so I'll just be watching it storm by storm. But as I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, the good news is right now there are no named storms out there. Now, the European model is a little bit like the American model, not showing any crazy development in the short term. Here we are in the Caribbean watching uh, these two tropical waves and this little impulse just to the east of uh, Trinidad and Tobago that will keep us unsettled. Let's zoom out in time here just kind of quickly. Uh, I don't want to waste any of your time. I know you got things to do. This is getting into next week, so let me stop the clock here. This is is by Monday. So we're looking at about five, uh, six days from now. And you see this is the increased rain, but not showing development. So we're going to pinpoint some flooding, the potential of that early next week for some of our islands. There's that strong second tropical wave that is back behind it. And then going out in time, the European model doesn't show much development out of that area that works its way through the Caribbean. But just like the ICON model and just like the American model is trying to show, it does develop this into a hurricane rather quickly. Now, it I'm hoping it's uh, uh, more north in latitude. The more north it is, the better chance it has to get caught up in this front here and move uh, up toward the north. So there should be a hurricane developing sometime later next week. Does not mean it's coming toward us. It is a wait and see. I'm hoping it does eventually make the curve. It'll have an opportunity to do so. But again, we'll be watching this as we go day by day together. In the short term, we've been watching these areas of rain and storms around. Here's the Gulf of Mexico. You see the buildup of some rain there. Always watching to see if any Thing, uh, spins up there. And then let me swing over here as we get back toward the northeastern Caribbean. 
We've had some scattered showers and storms. St. Kitts and Nevis, we've had some scattered showers and storms around. So some spotty thunderstorms, and some of those could be strong. And over toward Aruba and Curacao, we've had a couple showers. Not nearly enough. It has been so hot, but a chance of a few passing showers. But Jamaica today, we have a better chance of rain. Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, scattered areas of rain and storms. Trinidad and Tobago through Guyana, still unsettled. Passing showers and storms, Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda, and Anguilla. So that's today. This is tomorrow. Still some scattered showers and storms, and then of course watching off toward the east to see what may try to develop, uh, but either way we'll see increased rain once we get into early next week, even if nothing does develop with that uh, first batch. And then pulling forward into Friday, hinting at a little bit more rain popping up over toward the Bahamas. Those fronts, you see some of the rain here in the Gulf of Mexico, bringing some of that extra rain toward parts of the Bahamas by the time we get into the end of the week. Eastern Pacific, very active. Uh, just off your screen here, Gilma is weakening as it approaches uh, Hawaii, but it is starting to fall apart. Uh, and then uh, back behind it, there is Hector, uh, still a formidable system, but that will start to weaken and more areas of rain and storms, but not seeing any additional signs of development in the Eastern Pacific. So overall, better news there. As far as the seas go, here's meters, here's feet, just to give you a feel going from today into tomorrow, where we typically have some choppier seas, South Central uh, Caribbean this time of year. This is by Friday, nothing substantial. The bigger concern is if you get stuck in some of those thunderstorms that could give us some uh, lightning in some areas. Now, I mentioned uh, the last couple of days, I did want to point this out, Atlantic region of Canada, some stronger thunderstorms are possible today for some of us watching Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, New Brunswick, uh, Newfoundland. Keep me posted in the comments, just a system coming out of Quebec. And then as we work our way forward toward the end of the week, there'll be another front back here, but tomorrow kind of that in-between day. And then approaching the Great Lakes, you see more rain and storms firing up by the time we get into Friday. Now, as far as the rain totals go, spotty areas of rain and storms again. You can pick a spot on the map uh, where you are as we go island by island, Cayman Islands, Jamaica. If we get a couple thunderstorms, if you get a thunderstorm, 50 millimeters or two inches of rain will be a possibility. Same thing, Haiti, Dominican Republic, back through Puerto Rico. And then just keeping an eye on some of this moisture uh, that has been moving in, like I showed you. I zoomed down into the Northeastern Caribbean uh, a moment ago. We've had those scattered showers and storms. So Saba, Stacia, uh, Dominica, and uh, Antigua, and Barbuda. We could get a couple thunderstorms. Same thing, Dominica south through St. Vincent and the Grenadines, where we've had some uh, spotty showers. Trinidad and Tobago, uh, watching out for some scattered showers and storms. Same thing for us in Barbados. And then even in Guyana, the rain chance has gotten a little bit higher and a touch more active as we work our way towards Suriname. Northeastern Venezuela, we could get some rain. This here, just some pockets of areas of rain. Highest flood threat will be Guatemala, parts of Costa Rica and uh, Panama, and interior sections. Uh, western sections of Honduras as you get closer to El Salvador. El Salvador, if we get some thunderstorms, we could also get some uh, flooding. And around Mexico City, the rain chance has gone back up. We could get over 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain just over the next couple of days. So staying unsettled across Jamaica, if we get a shower storm, it could be on the strong side. Cayman Islands, we're looking at a 50% chance of scattered showers and storms as we go throughout the day. Trinidad and Tobago, a 50 to 60% chance of scattered showers and storms and staying unsettled settled as we work our way back through Barbados. Rain chance about 50%. So seeing those scattered showers, possibility, a lot of that moisture just off to the east trying to pump in. So the next three days across St. Lucia, rain chance will be holding at about 50%. Grenada, a 50 to 60% chance, up to a 60% chance of some scattered showers. Tomorrow, an active St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we could see some showers and even a few thunderstorms around as we hit our afternoon and evening. Martinique will do that as well. Rain chance 60% today. The next two days in Dominica, a 50% chance, but I'll show you the brighter colors on the rain totals. If we get a storm, it could be strong, dumping a good bit of rain in some locations. Guadalupe, 50% chance in the next three days. The next two days, Antigua and Barbuda unsettled, like we are right now, a 50% chance of scattered showers. And we'll do that again, St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat. Some of us have already had some rain. Rain chance elevated in Guilla and St. Barnes. That easterly kick, that easterly wind, bringing in some of those scattered showers. St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia will do that. 40 to 50% chance as we work our way back through 
Puerto Rico, U.S. and British Virgin Islands, about a 40% chance of some scattered showers today and a 40% chance of the next couple days in the Bahamas. By Friday, though, I showed you in that model, the rain chance does increase with an old front leaving some moisture behind. Turks and Caicos rain chance at 30% uh, as we go over the next three days and about a 40 to 50% chance of scattered showers and storms in the Dominican Republic. Rain chance today in Haiti, 40%, 30% chance for tomorrow, very hot. Belize, rain chance 40 to 50 percent. We'll have some scattered showers and storms around Aruba, slight chance of a passing shower. It's not going to be enough. Uh, Curacao, we've already had a couple, but it was like a drop or two for many of us. Uh, rain chance not super high. 50% chance, though, in Guyana. That has gone back up and a 40% chance as we work our way through Suriname. Scattered showers and storms. Watching out for some afternoon storms right across Cuba. 50% chance today. Costa Rica and Panama up to a 60% chance tomorrow. Same thing in Nicaragua. Rain chance 40 to 50% chance the next two days in Honduras, but West Western sections closer to El, El Salvador. That's where that rain chance will be a little higher. You see it here at Guatemala included, 60 to 70 percent chance of rain, 50 to 60 percent chance going up some as we work our way into Mexico City, 50 percent chance this is not a washout. Scattered showers and storms, Cozumel, Cancun, uh, back through uh, Merida, northern Colombia, rain chance 40 percent, 30 to 40 percent chance in northern Venezuela. And as we get back toward uh, Bermuda, just watching these old fronts around generally on the dry side. So yeah, strong tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa, watching for any signs of development. We know things are going to start to pick up in September. I'll be tracking it for you. The rain chance, though, either way, uh, will be increasing. Even if that first tropical wave doesn't develop, we're going to see that better chance of rain. So that flooding threat will become higher, which I'll be pinpointing uh, as we get into uh, the uh, future forecast and we'll go island by island. So I hope you're doing well and I hope you have a great day. I had a look up for you in the comments. Until then, be safe.